Hey, it's Kev from Blender Binge. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Blender 2.8 beta, or 2.80 beta, as some are saying. And I'm going to show you 12 cool things that I really like about it that are new. Ready? Let's go. The first thing, number one, is the splash screen. The splash screen is now a cool little splash screen. It's probably going to change once it's out of beta into the regular release, but whatever. It gives you these shortcuts, select with, spacebar, theme, and load 2.9 settings. A lot has changed in Blender 2.8. So if you're coming from 2.79 or below, if you click this, you can get into 2.8 and use it pretty much the way you were using 2.79 or similar. For those who are more adventurous and want to go in the, in the direction that the Blender devs are pushing, these options here will become huge. So we have shortcuts, which I'm going to leave as Blender, select with, left or right mouse button that's very big and i'm going to give this its own section in this video spacebar again another thing that's really huge and i'm going to give that a section in this video and then the theme blender dark blender light Ooh, that's pretty sweet i kind of like that i'm gonna leave it dark number two the menu change up here we now have this menu that's pretty much set up here and it you've seen this before in other versions of blender but they've kind of rearranged it so file edit okay edit is where preferences live now preferences here is under edit all right render gets its own tab now so you can render the image f12 still works okay or control f12 for an animation you get audio if you render a number of different things lock the interface okay you have uh windows and you have help Okay, help is where the manual is and where you can give money to Blender and a whole bunch of different things. Number three, glyphs. These little icons have changed. They used to be across the top here. Now they're down the side. And it seems that they are now, this, this is beta, they're sticking with this. So they just kind of redrew these icons. All right, so like the wrench is still modified. The little uh, world is still materials and so on and so forth. But they are now two-dimensional and down the side. So it's kind of more streamlined and out of the way. To me, it kind of feels a little bit like Houdini, the way they have it set up here. Number four, workspaces. All right, if you've been using any of the alpha builds of Blender, you've inevitably seen these workspaces. These workspaces are really cool in that they let you configure the interface around what you're doing. So for example, with my little cube selected here, if I go to modeling, all right, I'm directly in, I'm now in the modeling interface, and this is already in the edit mode. So I can always hit tab again and go back out of that, and hit tab and go in, but just by default, it brings you into this mode already, and uh, you can work with it. Okay, sculpting gives you the tools that you need right at, the, right at your fingertips, okay, it configures the windows for sculpting. UV editing similar and I can go through all of these I'm not going to go through all of these but they're all similar in that they break out the window system to kind of enhance your workflow right you can still go in and, and configure these guys like other versions of blender to do whatever you want but for now we're just going to trust in the developers and leave it as is number five left menu bar so as you've seen as I was going through these different workspaces you now get this menu bar that gives you the tools relevant to the thing that you're going to be doing. So modeling now gives you, it exposes a lot of these tools that have existed. Okay, I did a, I did a video that I uh, got a lot of comments that, you know, a lot of these tools have existed in Blender. Okay, the, the aim of that video was to just say, these are here now and I like these tools. But yeah, a lot of these are not very new tools, but they exist now on the interface. Easy, quick access if you want. Right. You can still get them through some keyboard shortcuts and whatever, but they're here and they're right in front of your face. Okay, Same with your sculpting brushes and everything else. Number six. This one is the biggest change in the beta and probably the one that's going to cause the most headaches. Bear with me here. Left click mouse selection. For those who have used Blender forever, left clicking would always take your 3D cursor and place your 3D cursor wherever you click. And then right clicking always selected your objects. Right clicking is now giving me a menu and left clicking is doing absolutely nothing when I'm out here. But left clicking on an object selects the object now. 
And, left clicking and dragging by default now, you don't have to hit B to get this box select anymore, you can go in and just select, 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 and then deselect, you just click. Okay, so select, deselect. Now hitting A once still selects everything, and hitting Alt A deselects everything, but you also can do that now with just your left mouse button. Alright, that exists. Number seven, 3D cursor. You still can use this 3D cursor, but now you have to hold down shift and right click. Shift, right click, now moves your 3D cursor. That's going to take some muscle memory and it's probably going to cause a lot of pain points for some people if you use this, but your muscle memory, you will get used to this. Believe me, I've gone through many different software packages. You will get used to this the more you do it. It will stop being painful and it will start being normal. Just be patient with yourself. Number eight, if you want to get rid of this 3D cursor, you can now go up here to overlays and you can turn off the 3D cursor. <gasps> Blasphemy! No, no, you can turn it back on. It, it comes back. It does. But for those who just hate this 3D cursor thing and you're new to Blender, you can go here to overlays and you can turn it off and get rid of it. I will say this. I give you a warning here. Warning. If you have messed with this, go back here to this little plus thing, okay, it expands this menu. Go here to 3D cursor and just go into these things here, click and drag, hit zero, hit enter, and make sure that that thing is at zero, zero, zero. Because if it's not, when you start creating new objects, they're gonna be created where this 3D cursor is. So, zero that out. That is my public service announcement about that. So you can go ahead and hide that, get rid of it, but make sure it's still at zero. Done. Number nine. Spacebar options. If I hit spacebar now, you know, where did search go? For those who've used Blender, it's 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 not there right now. Now, spacebar, okay, the biggest button on the keyboard, <laughs> by default now activates the timeline. It plays your animation. Okay, kind of similar to editing packages, which is cool if you like that. But like everything else, you can change that. So to do that, if you don't like that and that's driving you insane, simply go to Help, go to Splash Screen. This is the fastest way i found to do this. You can also go into Preferences, but this is fast. Splash Screen, and just change it back to if you like Tools or if you like Search. Search, Spacebar gives you Search. Okay, this is great for people who have used Blender for a while. Or you can try uh, Splash Screen Tools. And now you get a tool window that comes up when you hit spacebar. Okay. That's it. That's. And like that, you can change uh, select with right or left mouse button. Number 10, render. Render used to live down here under the render tab. Okay. And those who are going to be rendering now are going to be looking at that going, where, where'd it go? It now has its own menu item. So you go up here to menu, render. A render image or render animation. You can still hit F12 to render, it still works, or control F12 to render an animation. You just have to set it in, in your uh, settings down here. But for the time being, okay, so you just go to you go to scene and you can set where you want it to go. But just know render lives up here now, okay? Number 11, shading modes. Shading modes have changed quite a bit now. Up here, we have this new menu and it's very visible on the interface. So you could hit wireframe, and you get a wireframe view of your scene. Okay, you have solid. You have look dev, which gives you an HDRI image that surrounds your scene. And you have rendered, which in this case is Eevee, which is a new render engine. Or you can change that under rendering here. You can change that to cycles. And it's similar to what you've been using before or workbench, which kind of just gives you this kind of flat look. Okay, I'm going to leave it at EV for now. And I'm going to show you we have options here. So if I go back here to look dev, okay, this little look dev thing, under shading, I have options here. So here is my, here is my HDR image. I can change that and get different looks. Okay, and I don't have really any, any shader on here right now, but when I do a video on shading, I'll, I'll go into that more. But here's where you can change. You have these default HDRI images that'll that will light your scene for you and give you a a, a really cool, you know, shaded look. Uh, you have scene world. You have you can include lights in your scene. 
you can rotate the HDR, uh, you can uh, turn, the, turn the background on or turn the background off. So this gives you a number and you have settings here where you can go in and there's a whole bunch of things and there's a whole video I can do on this alone. Okay, so for other ones, like solid, you can have shading and you can do flat, you can do studio or you can do matte cap and you can change the different options in here as well. So you can really kind of configure this to however you want to work. It gives you a bunch of different shading options here that really let you go in and play. Number 12, the widget. The widget just lets you quickly go into an orthographic view. Okay, so it's kind of like front, side, back, top, bottom. All right, it lets you do that based on the axis that you click. And you can also go in here and you can click around and drag and move. And the cool thing is it doesn't seem to gimbal lock on you, so you can kind of just move around and use this to pan around your scene or move around, kind of, or tumble, I mean. Over here, you have zoom in and out. Over here, you have the pan tool. Over here, you have toggle the camera view, okay, which you can still hit zero, okay, number pad zero still works on there. And over here, you can switch from perspective to kind of like orthographic whatever. All right, so that gives you the, these all these options right here for navigating. Now all the old options still work, so middle mouse clicking and dragging still lets you tumble. Okay, uh, the rotate tool on your mouse wheel still lets you go in and out. All right, and the uh, shift key middle mouse still lets you pan around. So those are my 12 favorite things that are new in Blender. There are more like collections and a whole bunch of other things, but I'm not getting into those in those vi in this video. I'm going to do more of those on a whole other video that I'm going to show you. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit like, subscribe, share. There's a whole comment section where you could like just, you know, chew me out for not getting into real specifics or anything or that you, you know, hate my microphone or uh, that uh, you, you, you hate the way I present things or, or, or that you like it and, and I'm doing a good job. Whatever. That's cool. So, Go in, hit like, subscribe, hit that little bell notification because I will be making a lot of more of these videos and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.